relation to in relation to negative gearing. Um, it says uh, investment properties constitute a substantial proportion of the total value of negatively, negatively geared assets. The chart on the following page shows that deductions claimed for investment properties as a proportion of gross rental income have increased over the last 15 years and now are greater than gross rental income. Can you explain the significance of that, of that statement? I might get Mr. Brake or Mr. Tilly to work through that. Uh, Senator, so um, I think you're referring to, is it chart 4.2? Yeah, so it, it, it uh, 4.2 is over the page, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what that shows is um, uh, the expenses claimed uh, as a percentage of gross rental income. So the, the black line there is 100% representing uh, gross rental income. And then what it shows is uh, the expenses or deductions claimed against that gross rental income. Uh, so for instance, back in 97, 98, uh, you can see uh, interest deductions look like they're a little bit less than 50% of gross yep. rental income. Yep. Um, the capital works deduction is pretty small. Other rental deductions, just less than 50. Uh, so the total was a little bit less than, uh, of all those deductions, uh, it was a little bit less than 100% of uh, gross rental income. Uh, and then you can see uh, over time uh, that uh, the, figures, the figures vary, but uh, broadly in the last while, uh, the expenses claimed as percentage of gross rental income exceed 100%. Uh, so that, does that essentially means there's no, there's no tax revenue to the ATO then from, at the moment, based on these numbers? So I was just a bit, I wasn't quite sure what the... Uh, Senator, these figures um, I'm pretty sure wouldn't include anything from capital gains tax. Yeah. So uh, okay. you would need to take into account the capital gains tax in looking at, the, if you like, the tax over the whole life cycle of yeah. these investment properties. Okay. With, with the chart below 4.3, um, it says here that uh, chart 4.3 also shows that the proportion of tax filers with negatively geared properties increases as taxable income increases. So is that essentially, when you look at the blue line there, is that essentially saying that 25% um, uh, of um, free incomes, like let's say uh, 240,000 to 250,000, which is your highest income you've got there, 25% of all negative gear filers are in that income category, would that be correct? Correct interpretation of that. Therefore, high income earners are obviously the highest category of those who those who uh, adopt negative gearing as an investment strategy. So now I think what it shows is uh, the proportion of people in that income band who are negatively geared. Yeah. So of that so higher income group almost 25%. So basically, the higher your income, there's a pretty strong correlation there with an increase in yeah. people adopting the strategy. So the, yeah. the proportion increases, but the absolute number is yeah. much smaller, given that the... There's a lot fewer people. There's a lot fewer people. Okay. In that, yeah. Those income bands. Um, I, I saw some modelling from NatSim that, that suggested that 60% um, of all the benefits of negative gearing go to the top 10% income category. So that would probably be supported by I mean, do you have any other evidence to corroborate that, that kind of modelling? I, I think we'd have to look into that, Senator. Okay. Would, would that be something you guys would look into, or would that be something someone else, another department would...? That would be yeah. us. It, it would, so we'll take that on notice. If, if you could, I'd, I'd be very interested to, to, uh, to know that. So, um, look, just a couple of quick questions before I finish on yeah, small, small business. Um, 